and should be a Jew, then all the prophets mentioned in the Bible after Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, like Solomon, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, John the Baptist, may peace be upon them all. All these prophets fulfilled the prophecy because all were Jewish and all of them were prophets of God Almighty. In fact, if you analyze, this prophecy fits to no one better than our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, both of them, they had mother and father. Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, was born miraculously, without any male intervention. He only had a mother, he had no father. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is more like Moses, peace be upon him. And Jesus, peace be upon him, is unlike Moses, peace be upon him. Both Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, they were married and had children. According to the Bible, Jesus, peace be upon him, was not married, neither did he have any children. Both Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, they died a natural death. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, according to the Holy Quran, he was raised up alive. According to the false reading of the Bible, they say he was crucified on the cross. Anyway, he did not die a natural death. Both Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, they bought new laws. Jesus, peace be upon him, bought no new law. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17, that think not I have come to destroy the law and the prophets. I have come not to destroy, but to fulfill. So according to the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that he bought no new law. Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them both, besides being prophets of God Almighty, they were even worldly kings. Worldly kings mean, if they wanted, they could give any other human being the punishment of death. They were worldly kings. This was not the case with Jesus, peace be upon him. Both Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, they were accepted by the people as a whole, later on. But Jesus, peace be upon him, it's mentioned in the Gospel, that in the Gospel of John, he approached his own and his own forsook him. That means his own did not accept him. So if you analyze, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is more like Moses, peace be upon him. And Jesus, peace be upon him, is unlike Moses, peace be upon him. This prophecy fits to no one but our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And further says that I shall put my words into his mouth and he shall speak all that I command him. And we know that the Holy Quran was a revelation given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, through Archangel Gabriel. And whatever was revealed to him, he repeated it verbatim, as though words were put in his mouth. And the next verse of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19 says that, If anyone does not hearken unto my words, I shall require it of him. One particular version says, I shall take revenge. That means any person who believes in the Bible, who does not hearken unto the words of this Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take revenge from him. It's further mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12, that when the book will be given to the Prophet, and when he will be asked to read, he will say that, I am not learned. And we know that when the first revelation came to our beloved Prophet, when Archangel Gabriel said, Ikra, our beloved Prophet replied, Ma anabekare, Ma anabekari, which means, I am not learned. This prophecy again fits to no one but our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Even the name of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is mentioned by name in the Holy Bible, in the Old Testament. It's mentioned in the book of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. The Hebrew quotation is, Hikko mamitakim vikulli muhammadim zahdudi wa zahrai baina Jerusalem. It's a Hebrew quotation, which says, Hikko mamitakim vikulli muhammadim. The word Muhammad, to it is added im, because in the Hebrew language, if you give respect to anyone, im is added. Like how you have elo for God, you say elo him. It's a respect. Same to the word Muhammad is added, Im, Muhammadim, peace be upon him. 
So in the original Hebrew text of the Old Testament, Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16, our beloved prophet is mentioned by name. But the translation says that he is most sweet, he is altogether lovely. The Hebrew word Muhammadim has been translated into altogether lovely. He is most sweet, he is altogether lovely. He is my friend, he is my beloved, O daughters of Jerusalem. But in the original text, the word Muhammadim is there. Let's discuss the prophecies in the Christian scriptures. All the prophecies that are mentioned in the Old Testament of the Bible are also to be followed by the Christians. In addition to the Old Testament, they also believe in the New Testament. The Holy Quran says in Surah Taf, chapter number 61, verse number 5, that Jesus, peace be upon him, the son of Mary, was sent as a messenger to the children of Israel, to the Bani Israel, confirming the law that came before them and giving glad tidings of a prophet to come whose name shall be Ahmad, peace be upon him. The Holy Quran says in Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 6, that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Prophet Ahmad, peace be upon him, will be prophesied in the scriptures of the Christians. Besides he being mentioned in the Old Testament, he is also prophesied in the New Testament. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that I shall pray to my Father, to God Almighty, to send you another comforter who will abide with you forever. The Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse number 26 says that when this comforter will come to you, who will be sent by my Father, he will glorify me, he will testify me. It's further mentioned. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7, that nevertheless I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him. Now if you analyze in the Greek, original Greek manuscript that you have, the word used is paracletus. It's actually a corrupted form of the original word Perikletos, which if you translate means the praiseworthy or the praising one. If you translate to Arabic means Muhammad or Ahmad, peace be upon him. So in the original manuscript, in the original Greek, Perikletos means Ahmad or Muhammad, peace be upon him. Even if you agree that it is not Perikletos, it's Perikletos, the exact translation is not comforter, it means an advocate or a friend. But irrespective of whether the Christians, whether they say it's Perikletos or Parakletos, whether it is praiseworthy or praising one or the kind one or comforter or advocate, Alhamdulillah, all these meanings fit our beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. The Christian may say that this comforter, which the Bible refers to, is the Holy Spirit. It does not refer to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So you have to remind them. The prophecy says in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7, that nevertheless I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him. That means the criteria for the comforter to come is that Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, should go away. And the Holy Spirit which the Christians speak about was already there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came. It was there in the womb of Elizabeth. It was there when Jesus Christ was being baptized, peace be upon him. So surely it cannot refer to the Holy Spirit and it only refers to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. There are several prophecies. It further mentions the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, that I have yet many things to say unto you. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truths. He shall tell you things to come. He shall glorify me. This spirit of truth which the Holy Bible speaks about is no one but a beloved prophet, Muhammad peace be upon him. The prophecy of prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is very clearly given even in the New Testament. 
and the Holy Quran says in Surah Al-Hakaf, chapter number 46, verse number 10, that tell to the people that see you not that this is a book from God Almighty, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you reject it. Even after a witness from amongst you, from amongst the Ahli Kitab, testifies to its similarity with the early scriptures. He was a believer. But you are arrogant, and Allah guides not the unjust people. The prophecy, the Holy Quran says that, don't you see that this is a book from God Almighty, the Holy Quran, and you non-Muslims reject it, whether it be the Hindus, whether it be the Parsis, whether it be the Buddhists, whether it be the Jews, whether it be the Christians, it says, this book is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and a witness from amongst you has already testified to its similarities about the Prophet or beloved Prophet, and you reject it. The witness from amongst you was a believer. And you are arrogant people. You are unjust. And Allah guides not the unjust people. I would like to end my talk by quoting a verse of the Holy Quran from Surah Al Kawsar, chapter number 108, verse number 1 to 3, which says, Inna a'tayna kal kawsar, fasalli li rabbika wanhar, inna sha'anya kawalabtar, which means that we have granted thee that is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the fount of abundance, Jannah, the fount of abundance. So turn to thy Lord in prayer and sacrifice. And anyone who hated thee, that is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he will be cut off from all future hope. Wa dawan, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. I have come to destroy the law and the prophets. I have come not to destroy, but to fulfill. So according to the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says that he brought no new law. Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them both, besides being prophets of God Almighty, they were even worldly kings. Worldly kings mean if they wanted, they could give this prophecy fits to no one better than a beloved prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because Moses, peace be upon him, and prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, both of them, they had mother and father. Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, was born miraculously, without any male intervention. He only had a mother, he had no father. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is more like Moses, peace be upon him. And Jesus, peace be upon him, is unlike Moses, peace be upon him. Both Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, they were married and had children. According to the Bible, Jesus, peace be upon him, was not married, neither did he have any children. Both Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, they died a natural death. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, according to the Holy Quran, he was raised up alive. According to the false reading of the Bible, they say he was crucified on the cross. Anyway, he did not die a natural death. Both Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, they bought new laws. Jesus, peace be upon him, bought no new law. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5. Verse number 17, that think not I should be a Jew, then all the prophets mentioned in the Bible, after Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, like Solomon, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, John the Baptist, may peace be upon them all. All these prophets fulfilled the prophecy because all were Jewish and all of them were prophets of God Almighty. In fact, if you analyze,